guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really excited about today's guest, Olivia Parks. She's based out of Chicago and she's building the operations behind the 500K to 10 million per year business. Today's going to talk about her uh, extensive journey, freelancing, scaling, CEO, entrepreneurship, blind spots can be a really interesting conversation. Olivia, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Christopher. I'm excited to be here. Um, you know, first off, start people with your background and your story and we'll get right into it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely been a journey. I guess it, it really kind of, there's kind of two points where it started, but like in college, I was kind of going through an existential crisis. Like, is this really what I want to do with my life. I was doing a science degree at the time and like a year or so before this, um, my dad had passed away. And so I think that's why I was kind of like questioning things so much and like wondering, is this really what I want to do with my life? Because I'd been hit with this, you know, reality that life is actually very short and you can't just coast through it because it will be over before you know it. So I was thinking, like, is this really what I want to do? Like, I knew I wanted to make a certain amount of money. I had a certain lifestyle. I wanted to live a certain lifestyle. I'd become accustomed to growing up. And I knew that that wasn't simply going to continue if I, like, didn't create a career for myself where I could earn that kind of money. Right. So I was like, what, what shall I do? What shall I do? I realized my options really were go into investment banking and work myself to death for like a decade and then maybe I'll be making the kind of money I want but I have to deal with all of like the corporate BS or I could just start a business now and I knew long term that I wanted to start a business anyway so I was just kind of like well let's just do it now so I started a few businesses while I was in college I started um, an e-commerce business which was a massive fail I started a YouTube automation business which I just didn't understand Um, I just thought it was going to happen like way quicker than it actually did, basically, you know, so that was like a a learning lesson of like the realities of business. And then I started a Facebook ads agency and I was not good at sales. I was pretty introverted, but I bought this course like telling me how to get clients and they said do cold calling. So I would be like so nervous trying to like psych myself up all day before I'd make these cold calls to these randomers while I was just like a student in uni, you know? So anyway, I would do it. I actually had some people like that were interested. So like that was cool. But still, I was had this like massive fear of sales. So I had a friend at the time who was really, really good at sales. I called him up and I was like, yo, like who taught you sales? Because they're clearly doing something right and I need to learn from them. And it turned out to be this guy who lived out in San Diego and he had been a sales rep for over a decade selling high ticket packages and like consulting pretty big sales teams and like some well-known people just like in industries. And he had now decided to turn his skill set into a business and start a sales training recruiting company. So I was like, oh, cool. And he had just started a course and he was running it live. So I joined that and then I paid him to do some one-on-one coaching, like using money from my student loan. And then I ended up getting good at sales. And then he asked me if I wanted to work with him and like do sales for him. So I would, I was still in uni. I still finished my degree and I got my degree. So I would do uni in the night and then work for him in the evening because of the time zones It actually worked out. And then I was working with him, like doing sales and stuff. And then I kind of realized like he wasn't good at anything that came after the sale. Like he was a classic sales guy uh, or visionary in business, really. And so he just wanted to do like the big conversations, talking to people, but anything like operation system related. He just didn't have the brain for it. And so 
there was a big mess going on. And I'm like naturally very systems oriented, like being someone that studies science and stuff. So I stepped in and taught myself by necessity and just kind of like filled in the missing pieces and created the systems for his business. And I um, ended up creating like the whole recruiting system for like hiring sales reps and placing them with business owners and like that whole vetting process. I helped him hire all his team members, build out all his infrastructure and stuff like that. And I actually went, once I finished my degree, I went to San Diego to work with him for a bit in person and we doubled his business in a year. So that was pretty awesome. I became his COO. And then I was just traveling around the States, like meeting other people. And I realized like this wasn't an isolated problem. Like a lot of business owners have this issue with their operations because they are very visionary. And I was like, oh, wow. So then I decided I wanted to start my own business because I decided like my relationship with that original guy, I didn't really uh, align with him anymore. I didn't align with his values. I kind of lost respect for him as a business owner. So I was like, I want to do my own thing. So I did, and I got my visa, and I moved to Chicago, and now that's what I'm doing. I'm helping other companies with their operations. Yeah, quite interesting, and we'll get into like some of the nitty-gritty questions, but you talk about uh, one thing is you used Upwork, which is quite um, really interesting, to sign five-figure clients for your service-based business. What, what did, it's interesting that people are using these platforms in different ways. Yeah, I mean, so I was always taught kind of like Facebook, Instagram, client acquisition, right? So when I was working with that guy, like we got all the clients through like Facebook, Instagram and networks, right? And I had built up quite a good personal brand for myself during this time as well, because like I always knew the value of a personal brand. But then over a year ago now, probably like almost two years, 18 months ago, my Instagram got hacked and like got taken down. And so I lost like all of my leads in that, all this like credibility I'd built up for years. And I was like, damn. And so that was kind of like one contributing factor of me looking in different places. I have rebuilt up my Instagram a little bit. It's not where it was, but still. But really the bottleneck was when I like decided I was gonna create this business, the people that I wanted as clients are not just on Instagram all day. They have a presence on Instagram, but they're not really the ones in their inbox because I'm targeting businesses that are doing at least 500K a year, upwards to 10 million. You know, that CEO is not really fielding DMs from potential integrators or like operations people, fractional COOs, are they? They're, they've got bigger fish to fry. And so the only way you can really get those people for what I do through social media is if you have a huge brand yourself and they are compelled by that. And I knew I didn't have that. So I started thinking, okay, like how else can I get in contact with these people? Like, where are they? And some of my friends, like entrepreneur friends had had success on Upwork for like social media management. They were signing like 4,000 a month retainers and stuff. And I thought that was really interesting because I always had this idea in my head of Upwork is just where you go to get like a $10 an hour VA or something. And so I was kind of like, is this really going to work? But when they showed me they had done it for social media management and I started researching like potential jobs for um, operation stuff, I saw that there was actually a huge demand on there for it. People like wanted my skill set and they just didn't know where else to look for it quite clearly. There's a bunch of skill sets that people are dying for on Upwork that I think most people are missing a big trick. So I started on there and um, yeah, I started out getting 3,000 a month retainers. Now it's 6,000 a month. I've got like some really huge multi five figure contracts from there. It's really awesome because what you find is the sales cycle is a lot shorter because you're talking to people that already know that they have a problem and are so motivated to solve that problem already that they're actively posting to get help about it. Whereas on social media, you're spending half your time finding out if someone is even interested in what you have to offer already. Do you know what I mean? So um, it really cuts down the sales cycle. And I found that the clients I've got from here, they are much more motivated. Like they show up a lot better. They give me the tools that I need. They don't have any issues about like payment or whatever. Like there's never any worry that they're going to like disappear on a payment. Like 
they're real committed business owners and I think on social media sometimes you can get people that are half committed do you know what I mean so yeah it's been awesome and now I've turned that into a course and I teach other service providers and freelancers how to sign high ticket clients on Upwork as well uh it's amazing just um I wouldn't say creator economy but uh just the availability of um you go to these platforms or like kind of like marketplaces now and uh just like if you're looking for talent you go to upwork or fiverr um if you're you know arts and crafts ebay etsy um you know airbnb is marketplace you know all these different uh niche it's really fascinating what the internet has really done um so you it looks like you've done very well uh you've mastered the sales process And so talk about um, the operations behind scaling to millions. Yeah, I mean, it really all depends on where you're starting from, right? Because the clients I work with, they might excel in some areas, but they're like disastrous in others. So that's why any client I first start working with, I do a full audit of their business. Like everything from marketing, sales, operations, finances, fulfillment, how their team is structured, their offers, the payments, like diving into their finances, literally everything, like there's no stone unturned because you really have to diagnose the problem, like not just the surface problem of like, oh, we had a low profit month, but like why, right? Like finding out the root cause of that. And then from there, it's like creating, it's like I can then see all the missing pieces in their business and then prioritize them and then we systematically like create projects and systems in order to solve those problems right so I think to give you more of a real answer like what do most businesses like struggle with that I encounter a lot of people they simply like have no real structure for managing their team like they don't have any KPIs they don't have SOPs built out and like assigned to these people, then they don't teach them how to think. Like if some people have SOPs, they kind of rely on them too heavily and then they create robots. And then some people have like no structure at all. So people don't know what they're doing and they're being really inefficient and they are not getting the correct outputs. Like that's a big thing is like CEOs will hire people expecting them to be as good as them or ideally better like whenever I hire someone I want them to be better at the job than I ever was and most people think that that's just somehow miraculously going to happen but it isn't you have to give this person the right system the right processes and then you have to transfer your thinking to them and you have to hire someone that has the natural tendencies to perform that job at a high level right? So when, once you give them this training, they can do it better than you, right? So that's really what you're looking for. And that's kind of a lot I said there, but that's kind of like, if you think about it, those are kind of really the pieces that people miss because in order to like sustainably scale and grow your business, you need to build a team of people that take accountability, are committed, are self-stunned. They do the things better than you do, right? And that all comes from the hiring the systems, your processes, and the way that you can train these people up to think like you and like use their own thinking. Yeah, I'd say that's a big thing. Yeah, I love that. Hiring for talent, uh, if you look at your value of your time, let's say it's like, you know, 300 per hour or what. And then if you have like a $10 per hour task, you hire that and educate and create systems of people and teams. Um, I'm interested in what most CEO, what stops most CEOs from scaling their blind spots um, or, you know, their, you, you alluded to it earlier, but I'm just want to elaborate on it. I say one of the biggest things is uh, trying to do too much at once. They have shiny objects in drove And even if it's not like always moving on to a new thing, like a lot of, A lot of CEOs will be like, oh, like this is the new thing we need to implement that's going to like take us to the next level. And then two minutes later, it's a new thing. But then some people just are like always working on like 10 projects at once. And that's a quick way to get nothing done. 
right? So it's very easy to fall into this fallacy by, you know, how do I word this properly? So it's like if you you want to do like these 10 things, right? So you feel like you should do them all now. Otherwise, you're missing out on the outcome you would have got from doing that thing if you if you do it later, right? So they're always kind of like in this trap, like, oh, I have to do it now, even if that means I'm kind of doing a bit too much because otherwise I'm going to miss out on the outcome I want, right? But the thing is, is like they never actually reach that outcome because they can never do those 10 things to the level that's actually required to get the result that they're looking for. So I think that that is such a big thing of CEOs is having the discernment to understand, okay, I can really only focus on like one to three things per quarter to do them at the highest level and get the result that I want. And then like next quarter, I can reevaluate the projects and see what is going to be the next best thing. Because it's so easy to just like stay on this treadmill, like fooling yourself, you're making progress when you're doing a bunch of things, but you're actually really not at all. And that's like the biggest thing. And, And then the other thing, it's kind of similar that I kind of alluded to like when I first started talking about this is just like stopping and changing every five minutes like yes pivoting is important there's a line where you literally do just have shiny object syndrome and you're like oh this is the right thing no this is the right thing no this is the right thing you don't make any progress because let's say to you know, if you're working on a project and to get it to a point that it's successful, like let's say you wanted to implement my Upwork strategy, you wanted to like implement Upwork as a new segue for you to get clients, right? There's um, there's that initial time where it takes you to learn even how to do it, implement it, implement it for a while before you even start to see results. But most people, they'll get like halfway and then they'll be like, oh no, let me go do this other thing. They do that and then they get halfway on that and they've wasted so much time. They're always in this like the period where they never get any results. And it's like if you just actually stuck with something longer and just did that one thing, you would get the results. I think people quit too soon. They think that it's like the wrong thing. But the reality is they just weren't aware of how much time it actually would have taken to get the results. So, yeah, I really wish that more business owners just had that discernment and they knew like they were able to see themselves from the third person so if you don't do this already like this is an amazing thing to do like at the end of your day kind of reflect on the day as if you're an outsider watching the movie of your day right and you're kind of seeing how you reacted to things like what you were doing and kind of form your opinion of like what this person was doing like is it kind of crazy? Like one minute they were so excited about this idea and now they're just changing tact on their team and dropping everything and doing any, everything else. Like you might start to think, hmm, that's a bit weird behavior and you might decide to like do something different. So it's so important to be able to observe yourself objectively from the third perspective so you can take a different action. But yeah, I'm losing my train of thought here because I'm saying so many things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the point is, is that you've got to have the self-awareness to know when you're actually taking yourself off your focus, when you're actually inadvertently self-sabotaging, because that's really what it is. It's self-sabotage and it usually comes from like a fear of commitment and like this fear of success. So you're kind of just always in this like trying. Uh, It's it's quite interesting and uh, you are for such a young entrepreneur you have you know quite a lot of experience and insight the other question is uh you know as we kind of come to the end is um building a mindset and in a business where you'll never go broke again finding mentors and building high income skills making yourself recession proof you talked about these um these uh, high ticket sales talk about that yeah yeah so I think when I first started out, I guess a big motivation for me being a business owner all along was I didn't want to be reliant on anyone else for my income because I saw growing up like my my mom used to work and then my dad like started making a ton of money. So he was like, you don't need to work. So she didn't. 
but then he was really bad with the finances and kind of like spent all of our money and then she was kind of screwed and they got divorced and whatever and I saw all of that happen and I was like damn like I never want that to happen to me like I never want to be reliant on someone else for my income I want to know that I can generate my own no matter the circumstances and so I was like okay how am I going to do this you really have to pick up high income skills So no matter what is going on in the economy or the marketplace, there's going to be someone out there that is going to pay you that money. Like, let's say if you're a great sales rep, if the market is, you know, not doing well, like the economy's gone to pieces, you know, if you are a good sales rep, any business owner is going to offer you a chance on their leads because especially if it's commission only, right? So you know that in that climate, you can still offer value to people and people will be happy that they're making more money too and you will still make money. And same with operations, it's like, even if the economy isn't doing well, like people still want to work with me, first of all, because I know I can go into the majority of businesses and find profit that they didn't know about, which is obviously very useful to have when there's an economic downturn, right? And I can help structure their business to be more efficient and help them make more money in these times too. So, and then there's a bunch of other skills as well, like copyright. It's basically all of the services that you would give to like a, um, a business, right? So it's B2B services. So those are all recession-proof skills. And if you learn them to a high level and you know, like with certainty, you can do these things. So you've got to put in the reps, you've got to really understand it and become an expert at it. Then no matter what is going on in the economy, even if you had no money in your bank account tomorrow, if I was completely broke right now, I know I can still go out there, get paid for the things I do, right? So even if you lost, if let's say you're a business owner, even if you lost your business, you lost your team, you had to rely on your skill set again, you can do that, you know? And so I think that's like, it builds a lot of confidence in yourself and a lot of self-trust And it also makes you realize that like, okay, you're going to be okay. Like no matter what happens, I think there's like a fear from a lot. A lot of people have that fear, right? And I think if you have a product-based business, like that's all well and good. But if your whole thing was like, oh, just creating this cool product and then getting like venture capital and stuff like that, if that all goes to pieces, you don't necessarily have that solid skill to fall back on unless you're being super mindful about it and maybe your skill is like helping other people get venture capital, right? (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's always really important to think like when you're going into business, do you have a skill that you could always fall back on? And that's why I think everyone should learn sales first because let's say even if I was amazing at operations, but I didn't learn sales first, I don't really know how to get people to pay me money for what I'm good at you know? So you always need to learn sales first. And when I first got into business, I read a bunch of autobiographies from like super, super successful people. And all of them did sales at some point, all of them, whether they wanted to or not, they somehow ended up doing it. And it was like a big piece in their journey. So that's kind of why I felt so compelled to learn sales. And like, I really recommend it for anyone. I feel like I had something else I wanted to add to that. It's it's, uh, it's really interesting because, you know, market marketing and sales, uh, those two, and then innovation, those three, I think it was Drucker who said, said that. Um, and I, I love this idea where basically you are not dependent upon anything. And, you know, regardless of what's happening in the economy or they shut you down, you know, you still have a way to create. Um, and uh, I just, it's, that's, you know, any, and um, I love this idea where, you know, um, there's no security today. So the only security is the skills that you have, the high income skills that you have uh, using social media or uh, sales as well. How can people um, contact you, follow you? And um, one thing is, uh, what do you think were the biggest, you know, kind of one of the, um, the final question is, what do you think were the things in your journey that made the biggest difference to be where you are now for people that are just starting out? 
Yeah, I mean, I think probably the biggest thing for me is I went like crazy on personal development, like anything I could get my hands on, any kind of program, learn like personal development and like put yourself in tough situations. I did it. So I highly recommend that if you're going to be in business, you take personal development like it's your second job. Ideally, you enjoy it, so it doesn't feel like a thing. Like, I really enjoy personal development, which I think is, it's not a nice to have. If you're in business, it's a requirement, in my opinion, because your business will only ever grow as much as you have done personal development, because your barriers will always be where your limitations are in your personal development. So if you want to be successful as a freelancer, as a you know, a solopreneur or an entrepreneur, you've got to be invested in your personal development. Yeah, I love that. And um, one thing is uh, the best return on investment is in yourself. I, I was reading this one book by Alex Hermosi talking about just $100 million leads and basically return on advertising, marketing, you, those types of returns you can actually get much better than those returns in, you know, equities, the stock market, you know, in, in a business, you know, if you if you can get it to scale and, you know, the returns are almost infinite, the sky's the limit. And uh, looks like you have quite a number of followers on Instagram, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook. All of these resources will be in the links and show notes. And let's thank Olivia for coming on, you know, such a young age and uh, with much success and uh, so much insight and wisdom. So thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It's been great. you are listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week